the, the entire Pacific Basin. Uh, in a way, I have jokingly reflected to ourselves as the black hole in the middle of the Pacific where everybody avoids any kind of contact. For most of its quiet 24-year history as an independent nation, Kiribati's only real business has been fishing. This country of just 80,000 people is more than 99% water. But like many of its neighbours, Kiribati has been caught in the Pacific Cold War between China and Taiwan. Both have been accused of trying to topple the Kiribati government by bribing politicians. One of the former ministers had been provided uh, funds by the, Chinese government. by the Chinese government. Um, we, we, we asked the question, was he the only minister provided uh, support by the Chinese government? We didn't believe so. Taiwan uh, was heavily involved in the, in the last election in Kiribati by giving money to individuals, giving money to, to particular parties. For China, the stakes are particularly high. It's used Kiribati to expand its spy satellite program, and this is much more than a dispute between local politicians. Okay, thank you. Most people in Kiribati are crammed into South Tarawa, part of the main atoll, and it's become one of the most heavily populated pieces of land in the Pacific. Fresh water is scarce, and there are few natural resources here. It is fisheries. This is our single largest resource. But we've had very little benefit from this very vast resource. What has happened is um, foreign fishing nations have come in, taken the resource and actually benefited more from it. For this tiny nation to survive, the major problem has always been how to attract any foreign aid or investment. And while it may not have much in the way of resources, there's one valuable asset Kiribati is prepared to sell off to the highest bidder. And that's diplomatic relations. Since independence, Kiribati has had healthy relations with China and a resident Chinese ambassador. But now, his embassy, one of the biggest buildings on Tarawa, is locked up and deserted. Kiribati has received a better offer from China's main rival, and the Chinese diplomats here have been forced to leave. Across the road, a new embassy is being built. Oh yes, this is uh, um, the new building for the embassy of uh, Taiwan, and it's still under construction. Until their new embassy is finished, the Taiwanese are camping out at this local motel. The fight over uh, diplomatic recognition between China and Taiwan is relatively inexpensive in the Pacific, and it's about recognition, uh, full recognition. It's about UN votes. It's about uh, the island states, the four island states which do recognize Taiwan, will on a regular basis uh, put up for vote China, uh, Taiwan's, excuse me, Taiwan's uh, membership into the United Nations. Dr. Eric Shibuya is an analyst at the Asia Pacific Centre for Strategic Studies, a US Defence Department think tank in Hawaii, and he's been closely watching the China-Taiwan competition in the Pacific. China's ultimate endgame, I think, would be uh, it's to increase its status as an international power, to increase its status as an international power in the Asia Pacific, and perhaps ultimately, if it does increase its military force, particularly its long-range blue water navy, uh, having relatively friendly states in the South Pacific would be something that obviously China would find attractive. Kiribati used to be one of those friendly states. The former president, Teburu Sito, is a strong supporter of China and is deeply embarrassed about the switch in allegiance to Taiwan. In our culture, we're very ashamed of what we've done to a very good friend of Kiribati, a friend for 23 years, a friend that has done many useful things for our people, helping our people in the communities, the young people, women, the church groups, the villages, and also helping the government with many of its uh, infrastructural programs, including the airport, which was a loan of about $20 million.
This is another piece of infrastructure the Chinese built in Kiribati. These now deserted buildings used to house China's only offshore satellite tracking station. The Chinese were furious that they were forced to shut down this extremely sensitive facility. After checking with the security guard, the former president took Dateline on a guided tour of the empty station. Well, the buildings behind there, I understand they are the offices, the control uh, rooms where they have the uh, computers and, uh, and uh, control systems. And out here, this uh, sheds here, uh, they had the, uh, the, uh, the equipment, the tracking uh, equipment on trolleys that they can take out in the open and then they can always push them back under the roof uh, when they're finished with them. Looks like a big computer in here. Some cross floors there. This air conditioned room was packed with computer equipment. But as soon as China learned the Taiwanese were coming, they stripped the station bare and shipped the contents back home. No cameras were ever allowed inside here while the station was operating. When China put its first man into space in October, the tracking station in Kiribati provided critical support. Clear, uncluttered skies on the equator puts it in the perfect place to feed information to China's space program. But it's long been rumoured to have a more secretive and controversial role. In the Marshall Islands, right next door to Kiribati, is Kwajalein Atoll, where the United States military has been testing its missile defence shield. The US sees it as a crucial part of its national security, but China has been highly suspicious about the system. In the tests, ballistic missiles are fired from California at the Kwajalein Lagoon, where smaller missiles try to shoot them down. China has frequently denied it, but the Kiribati tracking station has been rumoured to be eavesdropping on these tests. I don't think there's any question that it, its location uh, allowed it to serve the dual purpose of being part of its uh, satellite tracking program and space program and observe the uh, Kwajalein activities by the United States. We know China's uh, space program is quite active. Uh, we know that uh, next door to us we have the US base in, in Kwajalein. We know that the and from Kwajalein, they've been testing some military uh, hardware. And uh, we are very sus suspiciously close to Kwajalein to really have no impact. The role of the tracking station became a hot issue during the Kiribati elections in June. While he was campaigning to become president, Anote Tong flatly denied any plans to change the relationship with China. <laughs> But after he won the vote, the new president dropped a bombshell. He invited Taiwan to open an embassy in Kiribati. I think what you saw in Kiribati was a, a new government making an attempt to get uh, financial contributions from Taiwan while at the same time maintaining a Chinese relationship because they felt that the satellite tracking station was going to be too valuable for China to give up. The Chinese embassy, when we made the announcement, were very upset, uh, somewhat threatening actually. And so my Secretary of Foreign Affairs, even uh, during debate uh, with uh, one of the, uh, the discussions, asked if they were in fact threatening us because they were asking us to change this policy, correct this mistake. And so what they did eventually is actually publish a letter to the, to the public and went around distributing it to the, the public.
uh, we thought this was very much against the, uh, the rules. And uh, this was taken, uh, this issue was taken up with the embassy. Uh, they, they did continue to distribute the paper even after that. And so we asked ourselves, you know, what would, they, what would uh, China do if we did the same thing in Beijing? The Chinese certainly played diplomatic hardball. They immediately ceased work on this $7 million sports centre and locked up the building site. They also pulled out four specialist doctors from Tarawa's main hospital. The change of allegiance from China to Taiwan prompted a rare public backlash. This protest outside Parliament was only the second in Kiribati history. The demonstrators demanded to know what deals had been done in private. There were the, the concerns that we were doing the wrong thing, we were, we were not uh, offering uh, traditional hospitality by uh, uh, doing this. But in the final analysis, I believe that I had no right to deny the cabinet the opportunity to consider it. We had no right to deny the people the opportunity to experience this uh, possible, uh, potential for change. Tonight, the president is hosting a cocktail party for Kiribati's new ally. We have a trade mission from Taiwan, and uh, they will arrive today. Uh, we are looking forward to some useful discussions. We are very happy that uh, you can... Uh... Lawrence Liu is the head of the 21-member trade delegation. You know, our private sector are so happy, so excited, because we have one more friend country with diplomatic relation. At that time, our government counted, counted my office. Why don't you try to organize a mission to visit this friend country? At first, all delegates, all the members, they are very hesitant to come here. Where is the uh, Kiribati? I'm sorry, yeah, you, you don't mind. I tell them, Kiribati is very, very good country, very, very beautiful countries. We got to be there to show all respect, show all friendship to all, uh, to all new, 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 new friend, new friend. One, two, three. Take care. Take care. But while the president seems comfortable with the new Taiwanese ambassador, his predecessor remains highly suspicious. When I was president, I, know I had approaches from various Taiwanese agents or Taiwanese representatives wanting to uh, capture my support. So I know what I'm talking about, that the, you know, the, the Taiwanese uh, representatives that I have met were very, very uh, serious about uh, getting Kiribati on their side. They want to capture politicians. They want to capture those whom they believe might be the most influential people in, in Kiribati and to try and get them on their side. These three Taiwanese tuna fishing managers have bailed up the Kiribati fisheries minister and are pitching a deal for a new processing plant. So the, the manufacturer in Taiwan can send you the machinery and there's a decent bank in Taiwan pay them. And you are back here to guarantee to pay back if this company in three to, to seven to five five years they can pay back. That's it. And interest rate very low. You can think about it. The next day, the Taiwanese delegation is taken to the sports centre the Chinese have abandoned. It looks as though the Taiwanese will step in to complete it. What, what do you think? What are your impressions of this day? Yeah, yeah, yes. It's a quite a good uh, project. Yeah. You think it's a lot of work to, to finish? Or? Yeah, no, sure, sure. Picking up aid projects is one thing. 
but allegations are being made that it goes far beyond this. Both Taiwan and China have been accused of trying to bribe potential presidents and topple governments to install their own man. As far as the last elections is concerned, I have my strong belief, and these are to be proven uh, you know, sometime in the future, that Taiwan uh, was heavily involved in the, in the last election in Kiribati by giving money to individuals, giving money to, to particular parties to use for the election, electioneering in the last uh, election. There was an allegation, and this actually was pulled out of the internet, and I believe it was pulled out of the Chinese newspaper, that um, I had been given directly funds, and our party had been given something like over a million dollars. And I, I say quite uh, categorically that, that that's not been the case. President Tong believes that these allegations are part of an organised campaign by China to destabilise his position. If Kiribati is going to sever relations with Taiwan, it would require a change of government. And perhaps this is what China is looking towards. Are you worried about that? Do you think they may be trying to undermine your government? I, I have no doubt that they, they will continue to try and uh, achieve that in order to be able to get uh, uh, back into Kiribati. We confirmed that uh, a letter through a letter uh, that um, one of the former ministers had been provided uh, funds by, in the by the Chinese government. Um, we, we, we asked the question, was he the only minister provided uh, support by the Chinese government? We didn't believe so. Uh, there has been allegation from the other side that China uh, may have uh, assisted my party in winning elections. And if that is the perception, if that is uh, to say that China has helped some of my ministers or some of my, my party members to fund particular projects in the village, a water project or a solar project, fine, I take that, I accept that. But I don't see that as interfering. The Chinese government declined interview requests by Dateline and offered only a written statement. Ironically, it claims that Kiribati's recognition of Taiwan is a gross interference in China's internal affairs. The Taiwanese ambassador to Kiribati also denied that Taiwan had been trying to buy its way into the country. We are very happy to uh, make the relation, build up the relation with uh, Kiribati. And uh, based on the, our common value of democracy, common uh, interests, and uh, uh, it's, an, it's a nothing to do so-called uh, uh, Czech uh, diplomacy. But it's not just China and Taiwan that the new president has to worry about. He now has Australia breathing down his neck as a result of the decision to recognise Taiwan. And I've had former representations from the Australian government to say that uh, we should reconsider the entire uh, policy. I suspect Australia has an, its own agenda with China, so maybe we, we upset that. And uh, we, we were doing things that uh, we were not supposed to have done. As a few commentators in Kiribati have said, if you choose to dance with elephants, occasionally you can be stood on. I think uh, what we are doing now, currently, is just increasing the China-Taiwan tension and uh, a little bit of the Cold War tension. I think we are, in fact, uh, uh, contributing uh, to that tension by what we're doing now in Kiribati. Australia, like the United States, should pay attention, to, should see which states are changing, which administrations are switching recognition, and why, what's, what's the play going on? For the regional superpowers, Kiribati is not much more than a pawn in the conflict being played out across the Pacific. But the current president is trying to make the best of the hand he's been dealt. And for now, that means cutting a deal with Taiwan. We don't have the, the, the base, the economic uh, basis to attract uh, foreign investment. So if this is why we need to establish this. If without being able to do this, our future as a nation 
is totally in question.